Hello, and welcome to a uh, Mudiwa Music Day. Earlier today, uh, you may have tuned in to my clarinet uh, recital, where I played about an hour's worth of uh, clarinet solo repertoire. I am very passionate about performing, um, playing clarinet, but also just being a performer in general. Now, you get to join the other side of my musicianship as a composer. Um, I, as a musician, honestly identify with three main things. I am a performer, I am a composer, and I am a music educator. But there's no music education recital, and I wouldn't want to do that. So, <laughs> welcome to the recital. Please enjoy yourself. In this recital, you will see a multitude of uh, compositions that I've worked on. Uh, I am very passionate about multiple um, outlets of, of writing music. Um, one of those outlets is writing classical notation, writing music for instruments that don't have a lot of repertoire, um, whatever commission I get and am passionate about. I write a lot for percussion because percussion is so hungry for new repertoire every day that it is probably the newest section, newest ensemble within the orchestra to really break off and do its own thing. And since it's so new, they need music and here I am. I'm also very passionate about um, film scoring and video game scoring and writing for visual mediums. Uh, and so you will see a lot of that in this recital. I am very passionate about passing my classes. You'll notice in a lot of these compositions, uh, they started off as composition assignments, but my passion and love for what I came up with grew into something more, and um, now I have about an hour's worth of music for you to listen to. This recital will not have an intermission, so please um, just wait till the end if you need to use the restroom or um, anything like that. Silent your phones and please no uh, pictures of recordings just for the sake of making sure that technology works um, and that there's no interruptions and uh, please enjoy. <laughs> Thank you. 
last piece you heard was called My Bittersweet Love, and it was a piece written for Woodwind Quintet. The biggest struggle I had with that piece was being able to write it in the first place. I really like being able to flesh out a melody and then give it some harmonic progression, or, or vice versa, I have a harmonic progression I like and then I lay a melody on top. It was very hard for me to think of five independent instruments working together for the sake of a unified sound. And so this piece was probably the one that took me the longest to write um, and to really finish. And I also started writing it doing a more difficult part of my life, just mentally. Um, I started writing it the semester after COVID really hit. And so it was hard to stay inspired and stay on top of my, my workload. Um, but we got it finished, we got it written, and I love how it turned out. I want to give a quick shout out to the people who were willing to perform this piece for me. Next up is Music With No Name. The title comes from the fact that this piece is pan-diatonic. And pan-diatonic means that there's no real tonic, there's no real sense of a key. So when listening to this piece, try to hum what you think do would be, what the home note, home key would be, and you won't be able to find any. Uh, the chord progression doesn't really lead into a chord that feels like a solid one, and I stay very far away from um, consonant triads or seventh chords. Everything is very clustered and um, a little crunchy, but I think it is still enjoyable and accessible. <laughs>
Next up is a piece I wrote for Vibraphone called Waltz for One. And this piece has a special place in my heart. I was commissioned by my old professor, Dr. James Doyle, to write a uh, piece for a solo percussionist to be dedicated to his former student, Delaney, and their wife, Jade. They um, got married. Congratulations on a beautiful marriage. Very happy for them. And this piece is dedicated to Delaney and Jade. Delaney is going to be the performer in this video, actually. So um, they got to take their own interpretation of this piece that I wrote for them and um, have fun with it. So please enjoy. Now we're going to start looking at some of my uh, film scoring. I'm very passionate about accompanying someone's visual art with my aural art, my musical art, and so it's been a lot of fun to put music to um, films. And this next piece, Biscuit, um, started off as a composition assignment just to get some of my film scoring ideas and the feeling for putting music to visuals. Um, there's no dialogue in the scene, so everything, the music really drives what's going on, um, which I don't really know what's going on. There, there's a plot in there. I don't know. You take what you will from this video.
anyone who knows anything about me knows I absolutely am obsessed with Avatar The Last Airbender. And so this next scene was an opportunity for my um, music production class to rescore a scene from any movie or show of my choice. And so obviously, here we are. I love how it came out. I tried to stay away from my influences from the original composer, Jeremy Zuckerman, um, but still trying to keep that is Eastern influence that's so heavily involved in Avatar. And uh, here's what I have. This next piece is titled Amigo Lejano, which means distant friend in Spanish. And I dedicate this piece that I wrote to my friend, Ivan. We went to high school together. We were in band together. We did almost everything together, to be honest. Um, he's still one of my best friends, even though he lives in Aurora and I have been down here in Alamosa getting three degrees in the last four years. But I wrote this piece to kind of show that I miss him and I'm thinking about him and even though we are far apart physically, we are still connected. So I wrote the lyrics and the music, which was a challenge for me because I'm not a poet. I'm not very good with my words. Um, and not only did I write the lyrics in English, well, I first wrote the lyrics in English and then had to translate them properly into, a, into Spanish in a way that grammatically makes sense. That was also idiomatic for the vocalist to be able to sing the melody property <laughs> properly. So the lyrics are all my own and it's very simple. And it's a, the lyrics are just a, a simple declaration that although we, Ivan and I, are far apart and although we show love for each other in different ways, um, we are still connected. And the last line of my song 
in English is, and when I look up at the moon, I know you are looking at the same moon too. I want to thank Ryan so much for performing this piece for me. Um, I wrote this piece with her voice in mind, so I'm so glad she was able to find the time to put this piece together for me. Um, so thank you, Ryan. <laughs> Departure of Love is another uh, film score that started off as an assignment that grew into something I actually really enjoyed. Um, it's a silent film, silent animated film, that has this black and white feel with a little bit of a twist. So the music definitely drives what's going on um, in the scene with no dialogue, and uh, I really enjoy it, so I hope you do too. <laughs>
a drive back from Denver. This was a piece originally written for my per uh, percussion methods class. And the idea was to write something that the other people in the percussion methods class would perform for each other. Now, it didn't have to be recordable or, you know, ready to perform for a concert by the end of the day, but that was our final, was writing a piece and then having other people perform it. And so I really wanted to write a piece that could be performance ready within the 20 minutes that we had to rehearse it, basically. And so I made it very simple and sight readable with the idea that you would give this to like a sixth grade group of percussionists, a little boy in the back that needs something to do and to get some uh, basic musical ideas uh, together when working in a chamber ensemble. We have some splits between the both marimba players, the melody is shared in be between the bells and the vibes, and the whole thing carries on a very basic one, four, five, one progression. So it's very harmonically easy, um, melodically easy, but there's still some things that some beginners can get the hang of in this piece. I want to give a shout out to Professor Laosi, uh, Maddie, Bianca, and Colin for putting together West for me. Thank you so much for putting that into your very busy percussion schedules and getting me a beautiful recording, so thank you. Now for a commercial break! Fragments. Planet killers. Space agencies. 
are predicting an extinction level event. We're going to be together, all right, kiddo? We're just trying to get to safety. They've been tracking the military flights to bunkers in Greenland. It's the only chance. commercial break and to uh, start off this second half I guess of this uh, recital we're going to move on to another percussion piece that I wrote called Pack a Punch to Bullfrog and uh, it's a very contemporary title for a piece and I titled it that because um, Pack a Punch Bullfrog comes from the Call of Duty Cold War game in the zombies mode and when you take a bullfrog which is a uh, submachine gun and you pack a punch it in a machine that just increases the gun's damage so that you can last longer. The name changes from bullfrog to high anxiety and uh, that's what this piece gives me. <laughs> the harmonies are based on A fully diminished 7 which is not fun for me to listen to. Highly um, dissonant music genuinely makes me anxious and uh enough schoenberg will throw me in a frenzy i'm not a not a not a fan of music that doesn't sound pleasing to the ears so to kind of troll myself and because i am a contemporary artist and i need to just embrace that um i took that very crunched harmony and made it into a piece for percussion i want to give a shout out to professor Leosi, bianca and colin for putting together pack a punch bullfrog I know it wasn't easy trying to fit it into your schedules and get rehearsal times for it, um, but I really appreciate getting a beautiful recording from you guys, so thank you.
attention now. Welcome to music class today. How's everyone feeling? Yeah. Awesome, I'm yeah. glad to hear it. So, when I clap this rhythm, I'd like you all to respond with, how does that sound? Good. Let's practice that a couple times.
juggling in sixth grade in my drama class. We had a woman come in and she taught everybody in the class how to juggle. I juggle mostly at school, um, like in my drama classes or before class or in the hallway, um, or sometimes on the weekends with my dad who also juggles. I love learning new tricks and like finding a trick that you can't do and then figuring it out, which is really exciting. I'd say my favorite trick would be Mel's Mess because it's kind of, it's an advanced trick and it took me about like two and a half years to learn, so I really feel accomplished when I do it. Reverse Cascade, Windmill, Mill's Mess, Shower, Columns, Variations with Columns, Tennis, Claws, I feel really cool because not a great many of people can juggle, so it attracts a lot of attention. And it's just like, you get very into your zone once you keep doing it for a while. You kind of just want to juggle and keep doing it until you master the trick. I guess that's it. What else is it? A juggle. So the short film you just watched was called The Juggler. And uh, that was another short little fun composition assignment that, again, turned into something that I really enjoyed. Um, the repetitive nature of the music kind of mimics the repetitive nature of juggling. I think it really just fit the vibe uh, that I was going for, so I really enjoyed it. This next piece, and probably, not even probably, I think it is, my favorite piece I've ever written, and was actually the first piece I had ever written that was worth listening to. It's called When the Dust Settles. I was commissioned by my friend James to write this piece for him. He was looking for solo flugelhorn music and was kind of unimpressed by his options. And so when you don't like the music that's written, ask someone to write something you do like. And that was his philosophy in commissioning me. And so I took what I knew about his personality. I took some songs that he suggested as some reference tracks. And I just kind of worked with him, showed him some stuff. Um, and really had a, a dialogue about this piece and it turned into something that I really, really am proud of and is the first piece that I am proud to have written. I am so proud of this piece, in fact, that I may or may not have a permanent scar <laughs> of this piece's chord progression on my arm. I want to give a shout out to Brandy for performing When the Dust Settles for me. Um, I really appreciate her time and dedication to coming in and performing this piece. It was a lot of fun having her around and uh, I consider her one of my composition buddies as she was another composition major when she was here. She graduated before I did but um, I still consider her a colleague. Please enjoy When the Dust Settles.
close out my recital, here are a couple pieces from my uh, EP called My Combinations EP. This is a, a EP that I worked on over the summer of 2021 when I finally had free time, was away from school, I didn't have any requirements or any due dates or anything like that, so I sat down in front of Logic and just hammered out whatever I heard in my head. And you can hear the rest of this EP on my Spotify, but um, here are uh, Rain and Something For Now. Uh, the visuals were given to me by Alyssa. Thank you so much, Alyssa. I gotta give a shout out to her for giving me these wonderful visuals um, and uh, putting this kind of music video vibe together for these. So please enjoy the rest of my recital. This is wine.
thanks for coming. Have a good night. And um, I guess I'm going to walk up on stage and take a bow. I, I, th I think I should do that. Am I bowing right now? I'm going to do bow with me, present idea. Hooray! <laughs>